Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about aggregates, or also known as facets in Elasticsearch Universe. Now, why are they called facets or aggregates? Well, actually, here's the clarification. Uh, facets are actually being deprecated in Elasticsearch version 2. So if you're using Elasticsearch anywhere below version 2, facets will still work and you can follow along using facets for almost everything that we're going to be showing you guys. But it's going to be deprecated in version 2, so I recommend that you guys follow along using aggregates. All right, with that out of the way, uh, before we actually jump in, I want to mention that our friends over at Uzu, they're actually looking for talented Ruby and Rails developers and front-end developers. Uh, Uzu is a boutique web agency and uh, they're located in the heart of Bangkok. If you're in Bangkok or you are thinking of relocating to Bangkok, uh, definitely check their, uh, their website out and we're going to have the link in the description below. So check that for more details. All right, with that out of the way, let's hop right in. So what it is, is uh, aggregates and what are facets, right? So um, I think I'm just gonna refer to them as aggregates from now on. So what are they? Well, let's take a look at our search or we have got it all implemented. Uh, and uh, let's say over here, we're gonna do a search for a movie called Terminator. We all know what Terminator is. If you don't, you've been living under a rock for the past whatever years. Okay, so here are our search results, just with the plain uh, keyword search. You know, we see over here that we get pretty, you know, I don't know, I wouldn't say good, but decent enough. Like, I mean, it has the word Terminator in the title, but I'm looking for something more specific, right? I'm looking for James Cameron's Terminator and check out what I can do over here. So down here, I can actually click on the filter and I can say, hey, you know what? I just want James Cameron's Terminator, and here is what I get. The Terminator, the making of the Terminator, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, uh, uh, other voices creating the Terminator, the making of the Terminator. So all these content, all these search uh, is actually what I'm looking for, which is great. Uh, I can also filter by genres, uh, which is very cool. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to implement all of this in the next few episodes. Uh, you know, it's there's quite a lot of content uh, regarding aggregates. It's quite, uh, you know, it's quite advanced in terms of uh, doing search with Elasticsearch. There's a lot of concepts, a lot of things you guys have to be aware of. Uh, so I'm gonna show you all of that really, really cool stuff. I'll also take note of the URL. We have beautiful URL over here and check this out. I can apply multiple facets as well. I can click so I can show, I can see over here uh, which genres we have activated and you can see here that you know it's highlighting the the filter that is active very very cool so if i click on that again it correctly eliminates that uh, so all these url features has nothing to do with um, elasticsearch this is just my obsession with beautiful urls now the cool part about this is if i copy this and i paste this in another tab hit enter what's going to happen is it's going to automatically highlight on the filters as well which ones i have so all this stuff is gonna be coming in the next few episodes. I'm gonna show you guys how to do all this stuff. Very, very cool. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, I'm gonna head over to my terminal over here. I'm gonna switch over to the branch where I have content for, for this particular episode. All right, let's take a look at the code. Now, um, before I, uh, you know, before I go ahead and, and look at the code, let me show you what we're going to be accomplishing in this, just this particular episode. Uh, so let's do a, do a search for Terminator. We're going to start simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to get these aggregates to list out, uh, like I have on the screen over here. Uh, so the search results are exactly the same, right? Uh, I'm just going to show you guys how to list out all the aggregates. Now, what are aggregates? You may be wondering. Aggregates are actually very simple. They're just groups, right? Groups of, um, you know, like it's basically taking a look at all the search results and it's putting them into groups and then counting them. How many uh, search results in each of those groups? That's all there is to it. There's nothing more to it. All the filters and all the, uh, you know, the URL features and all that stuff, that's happening, you know, through code. Like we have to actually implement that. That's not a part 
of, uh, you know, we're using Elasticsearch to filter the search results and all of that, but implementing the beautiful URL with the filters and all that, that's code we have to write. And I'm going to show you that. All right. So, um, so this is what we're going to be accomplishing in this episode. Let's jump in and take a look at the code. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's take a look at the mapping uh, over here. Uh, in the previous episode, we did not have these sections over here, these indexes for the crews and the genres, and now we do. And then the reason why we have that is because, let me explain a little bit. So by default, when Elasticsearch finds uh, a nested object you know, in the JSON that we pass in for it to index, what it does is it flattens those uh, results and then indexes that. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at this graphic over here. Uh, so essentially what it's doing is it's putting all the IDs that I have for the crews in one array. And then it, ha it takes all the names uh, of the crews that I have and put it in another array and indexes that like in two separate arrays instead of having them as objects the way that it should be. Uh, now, the downside of doing it like that is uh, you lose association between the ID and the name. Yeah, sure, you can take, you can, you know, you, you, you can index the ID and the name, uh, but they're all in two separate arrays, right? So if they're in two separate arrays, how do we know which ID references which name? That's the problem. All right, let me disable some notifications over here. All right, um, so the so what we have over here is we're uh doing nested um you know nested type for our crews and our genres and what that does is it preserves a relationship between the id and the name it it keeps the the nested objects as objects as json objects it doesn't you know flatten them into two separate arrays like it did if we didn't specify the nested option all right, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the search query. So the multi-match query is exactly the same. I'm not doing anything to change any of that stuff. Uh, and what we have here is we have the aggregations. And, and over here, uh, one thing I did change is over here in the custom search method, I have the AGG, the ads, right? And then I'm using the aggregation method over here to build the actual aggregation. And this is what the structure looks like. Now, because we're using the nested type, we have to use what we call nested aggregation. So here we have a crew aggregation and uh, I'm specifying the nested path and then I'm specifying the path is the crews. So this path name is basically coming from over here, right? All right, so then I'm using this crew aggregation method to actually build our aggregation. So here I have the ID and name aggregation and I'm using the terms uh, aggregation and what that's going to do is it's going to give me um, the the crew ID piped with the crew name. Now why are we doing this right? Uh, let me just show you. So I'm gonna hop into the console and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, so over here, I'm just going to do a binding.pry and hop over into this part here and do a search. And then in my console, I'm gonna be able to dig into what my aggregations actually look like. All right. So this is what my aggregation looks like. So you can see over here, I've got James Cameron. This is the crew, right? And see here, this is the ID uh, of the crew that is represented uh, for, you know, for the James Cameron person, the, the crew member, right? So this is the ID and this is the pipe. Now, why do we need this? Well, when we're actually doing the filter, we need to use the ID to do the filter. But to do the name, that's we want to use a name in the front end. Like when we render it out, we want to use a name. We don't care about the ID, right? But when we're actually creating the link, the link that will have the ID that will be passed into the URL, which is then going to be passed over into the search engine to do the actual filter, we're going to use the ID for that, right? So um, 
now that you guys understand that, I hope you do. And if you don't, leave a comment uh, below and I will try to answer it uh, the best that I can for you and I'll clarify it for you. So as you can see here, we have the key. Uh, the key has the ID pipe and then uh, the name, right? And then we also have the document count. So this is the, the count of how many uh, of the search results are tagged with James Cameron, right? All right, so this is basically what it actually looks like in, um, you know, in our, uh, in when it, when it comes from Elasticsearch. Now, let's take a look at how we actually render that out in our views. So I'm gonna hop over into the code here. And as you can see, I have aggregation presenter, right? So I'm taking the response and the raw aggregations from Elasticsearch and I'm passing it into our presenter. Now, why am I doing that? Because check this out. So if I go into my um, index over here, I'm rendering each aggregation out and I can use like ag.name, ag.buckets.each. So it makes it very nice. And if we didn't have presenters, we would have to write all kinds of code in our view, which is very, well, unclean and just makes me very unhappy. So let's take a look at our presenter and see what we have. So I'm gonna head over to the presenter over here. I'm gonna look at the aggregation presenter. So this would be all the code we would have to write in order to get the correct, um, you know, the correct name for, um, so for example, for this part here, the cruise, this is the actual name of the aggregation, right? So why do we have to do first and then split and then get a first uh, and pluralize? Uh, interesting, right? So let's do a binding.pry over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the binding pry from here. So now that we know what we get uh, using this over here, um, let's go into our dissect our presenter. So here we have uh, binding.pry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reload this again. So let me just exit from this request here and I'm gonna hit reload and we're gonna get stuck in the binding again. And this is cool. This is now where we can take a look. So here we have aggregation. This is what gets passed into our object. And then what we're gonna do is see over here, this is where we're gonna get the name from. And this actually came from our code over here, this part here. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, well, if the first element is the name, uh, then we have to split it by underscore and then remove the word aggregation. So it's, once we split it, we get an array. So we just select the first one, the first item, which is gonna be crew, then we pluralize it. So it says cruise rather than crew, singular, and then we titleize it, right? And that's basically how we came about this code over here. Now, I'm not gonna go into the detail of, um, you know, explaining to you all of this stuff, uh, so, but suffice to say that that's how you can actually, um, you know, now that you know how I did it, you can play with this yourself. You can set this up and dig into the aggregation object for yourself and see how I came up with this code, right? And we have another presenter for the buckets as well. So if you take a look at over here, I have the bucket ID and it's taking the key. Uh, now, if we go back, the key, this is the key over here. Then we're splitting it using the pipe and then selecting the first element to become the ID. Then we're selecting the last element to become the name. That's how I got the name, right? Same story, guys. Uh, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just taking what I get from Elasticsearch and dissecting it and then putting it back together uh, in the way that I want it to be. All right, that was a lot of, uh, of explanation and a lot of code. Uh, I hope you guys uh, understood that. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, you can ask me uh, either on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is, uh, I'm gonna be put it on the screen over here. You can follow me. Uh, you can ask me questions uh, and I will try to answer them on the screen for you uh, in, in the upcoming episodes. And also you can put them in the comment section below. Now, if you guys found this episode useful, don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it helps us out a lot. And uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a good one and I will see you guys in the next video.